Good evening family and welcome to New Dawn Ministries TV. And tonight we'll be talking about what is a soul tie. And this naturally follows where we have left off on the series titled God Ordained Relationships. Now, in each and every relationship, it is inevitable that soul ties will develop with time. Every relationship will have a certain level of measure of a soul tie. And a soul tie is an invisible force that connects two souls. If you go into the book of 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1, it says, now when now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul, listen to this, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. I'm reading this in the New King James Version. So, Jonathan, who was the son to King Saul, the Bible tells us that his soul was neat. In other words, he was connected. There was an entanglement. He was tied up to the soul of David. And naturally, that explains this principle of a soul tie. So a soul tie is when your soul gets connected to another person's soul. And there's this invisible or emotional or a spiritual connection between two people. Hallelujah. Now, I must say this, a soul tie is not necessarily bad. People always think that a soul tie is something that is bad. Actually, a soul tie is a very important uh, spiritual principle that God had created between two people. In fact, a father who decides to deny their biological children, the first thing that they need to deal with before they can deny their child is to deal with a, a, a spiritual connection or a soul tie. They need to terminate a soul tie. Once they've terminated a soul tie, it's easy for them to deny a, their own biological children. In fact, even a mother who decides to go for an abortion for whatever reason, they need to cut, they need to terminate a soul tie before they can deny and, and, and choose to go for an abortion. So a soul tie is a very important uh, spiritual principle that ensures that there's a knitting of souls, that knitting happens in emotionally or spiritually. Now, I want to talk about um, how does soul ties get formed? Uh, and, 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 and this is important because soul ties get formed um, on four different um, levels. And the first level is it's a biological connection. Now that I was talking about the mother and child and the father and child. So a biological connection, in other words, if I'm connected to someone biologically, there is a natural soul tie that gets formed automatically. And the strongest soul tie that can get formed is between a child and their mother because the, the, the child... Uh, all of us, we developed in our mother's wombs and we were physically connected um, by an umbilical cord to our own mothers and naturally we are connected to our mothers. In fact, when our mothers carried us for nine months, um, there is a connection that, that, that takes place and it's an important connection because a mother ought to be concerned about their baby. Even the father as well, they start to connect to their child because they are connected to the mother of their child. So a soul tie can connect biologically um, between two people. Um, and, 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 and it's interesting because Jesus once said that he is a friend that sticks closer to us than a brother, communicating that the connection between us and God has to transcend even a biological soul tie. So a soul tie that, that we get connected to biologically is important, but it's actually extremely powerful. The second point that two people can connect to each other through a soul tie is through marriage. Marriage is a very important 
uh, institution that also facilitate a soul tie between two people between a husband and wife. So a soul tie can also develop and in fact it should develop because a union between a husband and wife, as we explained before, it is the highest union that God had declared. In fact, God had said that a husband shall leave from his house and they will cleave to his wife and the two of them will become one flesh, communicating that that soul tie ought to be very strong. And number three, a soul tie can be facilitated by sex. This one, we'll discuss it in more details next week. But sex can also facilitate a soul tie between two people. And that's why it's so important that we understand uh, because this type of soul tie, it resulted in all sorts of complications when it comes to relationships. Um, and people are not aware that there is no casual or free sex you know sex connects two people and we'll discuss this in details next week spending time with someone can also accelerate and form a soul tie and this is important because people think um, the more they spend time with other people um, nothing really happens no 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 the more you spend time with someone, the more you are strengthening an invisible connection between the two souls. And that's why it is important that you become strategic in whom you connect with or, or in whom you spend your valuable time with. Every person that you spend your time with, you will inevitably develop a soul tie. And that's why sometimes I tell people and I say that, in fact, a relationship can naturally come between a boy and a girl. You know, if a boy and a girl, they spend um, excessive time together, it's inevitable that they will begin to develop feelings for each other because of the amount of time they spend with each other. And when, they, uh, and when, and when that soul tie gets developed, all of a sudden, the two people who were not intending to become in a relationship with each other, all of a sudden, they now starting to become in a relationship with each other, which now can complicate the nature of the relationship going further. So when you spend time with someone, be strategic who's that person and understand that you are capable of forming a soul tie with anyone. Even if you hate a person, if we keep, if you spend excessive time with them, with time you learn their behavior. And once you've learned their behavior, your soul becomes neat with them. And once there's a connection there, you will begin to form a liking or you will be connected with them. I want to talk about the power of soul ties. Now, if you can go to the book of 2 Samuel, Chapter 9, verse 1. It says, Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Listen to this. For Jonathan's sake. Hallelujah. So many years later, after David and Jonathan had formed this soul tie, if you know this story, Jonathan died and uh, Jonathan's father also died and then David then assumed and, and he became king of the entire nation of Israel. And years had passed on and at the peak of the kingdom of David, one day David was bothered. Now David knew of course that um, uh, Saul had died, his best friend Jonathan had also died. In fact, he had mourned for him. In other words, he had released him in his heart. He had accepted that he had died. But many years later, he asked the question. He says, is there anyone who is still connected to Saul's family for the sake of Jonathan? In other words, he's highlighting that what I'm about to do, I'm doing it because of the need, the, the entanglement of my soul to a dead man. And that's the power of soul ties. So, so David says, listen, I, I, I'm enjoying the fruit of this kingdom. I'm a king. The thing that I was, um, um, the, I was born to do, I'm actually doing it right now. I don't have enemies. I've got all the wealth. I am wealthy. But is there a person... 
and the house of Saul for the sake of Jonathan, whom I can show kindness. Hallelujah. And I love this. And also this, it also shows us the power of soul ties. And I, I've written something that I want to read to you here. I've said that soul ties are important for they facilitate an extension of mercy, even if the relationship was not perfect. I want to repeat this. Soul ties are so important and powerful for they facilitate an extension of mercy, even if a relationship was never perfect. And that's why soul ties are so important. In other words, what bothers someone should bother you because you are connected with them through a soul tie. And this is important because if, if I'm connected to someone, whatever difficulty they experience, I, I rely on a soul tie so that I can extend a hand of mercy and grace to help them. But if I'm not connected with them through a soul tie, if they are troubled, I will never be troubled. Why? Because my soul is not connected with them. That's why every time, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking to the parents. You know, parents are selfish in this sense. If parents are gathered together and they came with their children and their children are playing outside and all of a sudden we hear a cry of a child outside, the first instinct in every parent is, I hope it's not my child. <laughs> you know, I, I, I know parents, you, you know, you'll forgive me for this one. When, when there's a cry in, in, in each and every parent's heart, they are hoping that is not their child. Why? Because naturally, a, a parent is connected to their children through a soul tie. And whatever bothers their children must bother them. Yesterday, I received a call from a teacher um, of my child. And she called me, she asked me, are, you know, um, are you the father of this child? And, and I was like, yes. And all of a sudden I became concerned because I was wondering why are they calling me? But I'm concerned and I gave her my full attention because my soul is needed to my child. And I gave, I, I gave her my full attention, only to find out that there's nothing serious. So every, so a soul tie, it's so powerful, it's so important that even if you're going through uh, um, the best time of your life, but the person that you're connected with through a soul tie, whatever happens to them will also bother you by necessity. Father, we thank you for this teaching. And I pray, O oh God, that we may, be, we may have the wisdom to choose strategically who we ought to be connected with through the souls of our spirits. And I pray, O oh God, that you guide us and you establish these godly soul ties so that we can flourish in the relationships that you've created us in. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Let's meet again every Tuesday at 6 p.m.